Hello everyone, welcome to Carnivorous Plants Hub. Today we're going to be setting up and using some new grow lights I just purchased. I've been doing some research to try to find a good LED light solution that will go well with the new wire shelving that I just purchased for my new grow tent. I landed on the Barina grow lights as they were a great fit and seemed to be exactly what I needed. I'm going to unbox them, get them set up, and I'm going to show you kind of everything in between. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video though because I'm going to give you my first impressions of these lights. They've actually been set up for about 10 days and I'm ready to give you my early first impressions. One of the main reasons I'm investing in a new grow light is that I'm trying to get myself in a position where I can start selling some plants. It's time to make the jump and get myself set up to being able to support more plants on a larger scale. This is just a baby step in that direction, but if I can find the right equipment that works, after that it's just kind of rinsing and repeating. So let's get this box opened up and start talking about these Barina grow lights. I'm gonna go ahead and pull everything out after that, we'll talk about the lights specifically. This way you can see everything that comes in the box with this light kit. My first impression of the packaging is pretty good. Everything is nice and tight in the box, which makes it less likely to be drying around during delivery. The first thing I see here is an instruction manual. Just a simple two-page little book that appears to give some setup instructions. We'll take a closer look at this later. The next thing you'll see here are the lamp reflectors. These help guide your light down toward the plant so you don't lose a bunch of light out of the side. It's nice that they are all taped up and not just sitting loose in here. I'll show you exactly how these go in here in just a bit. With a really nice touch, they do include a nice amount of zip ties. Not something they really needed to add, but it ended up being the way that I set mine up, so I really appreciated that they included them. Here you'll see the mounts for the ceiling or wall so you can mount the light. I did, I did not use these, but definitely know that some people will need them. I'll keep them for in the future just in case I ever need to mount my lights to a wall or a ceiling someday. They also included some of this two-sided tape stuff as another option for attaching these to a surface. I also did not use these, but we'll keep them for possible future use as well. It does come with three separate power cords. These lights are sold in sets of two, and this is a six light kit. This gives you the option to break the lights up in sets of two and use them in different places. So it's really nice that they come with the individual power cords. Here are the cords to daisy chain the lights together, a feature I really wanted to make sure that these lights came with. With these, I can connect all the lights together and only use the one power cord. I really didn't want to have to plug in three different power cords, so this was a must-have feature for me and something that I really needed to make sure that this new light had. And then right here are some clips that just kind of pop right on the top of the lights. They have a hole in the top so you can use whatever you want to tie them up to the top of your shelf. Uh, in this case, I used the zip ties, which is what it came with, so it kind of worked out perfect that I didn't really need anything extra to hang these up. And here are the lights, the Barina Grow lights. Six in total for this kit. I paid $69.99, but I just noticed on Amazon that there's currently a $10 off coupon. So you can actually get six of these two foot T8 LED lights for only about $60. That's just $10 a light. This is probably a bit of a spoiler alert, but that's actually a pretty good deal for effective carnivorous plant grow light. I have links in the description for the two foot lights and the four foot lights. The four foot lights also come with six in the kit, but are $99 with a $10 off coupon right now. So only $90 for the six four foot long lights. Check out the description to see if Amazon still has that deal going on. I also do have to give a quick disclosure here. I'm not a light guru. I don't have fancy light measuring equipment. I thought about getting one of those little devices that measures the light, but they're kind of pricey. I'm really basing my impressions and review on how these lights work. With carnivorous plants, you can often tell how they color up if the lights are working or not. At the end of this video, I'll definitely show you if there is any coloring on the lights since I used them for about 10 days already. I just wanted to clarify that so people don't expect a really super in-depth scientific review of the light output. I also just wanted to mention real quick that this is an ongoing review. After probably a few months of using these lights, I'll give an update on how they've held up and if the plants are growing well. So make sure to sub to my channel and turn on notifications so you can be alerted when I put out that updated review. All right, here they are, the Barina Grow Lights. I'll give some quick highlights here of the specifications, but if you want to dig deeper, the Amazon product page does have a ton more information. Each of the two foot lights operate on 24 watts of power. I'm going to use two of these lights per shelf, which gives each shelf about 48 total watts of power. They claim to have about a 50,000 hour lifespan, so they should last for a really long time. They're made out of aluminum and a superior PC. The beam angle is about 270 degrees and have a 50 to 60 hertz frequency. This is only a set of six, but the lights support daisy chaining of up to 12 total lights together at once. This is a full spectrum light that is white, but has a very slight pink tint to it. When looking at the light by itself, it's hard to even really notice the pink, it just looks mostly white. 
they do not put off that really pink purplish light that will actually light up your entire room with that pink or purplish color. If you want more specifications, check out the link in the description to go check out the full product pages. There's a little bit more information there about the lights. All right, it's time to get the lights set up. But real quick before we do that, if you're finding this video useful, please make sure to like the video and subscribe to my channel. I'm trying really hard to start my own carnivorous plant nursery someday. It really is my dream. To support me in my dream, you can leave a monetary thank you by clicking the thank you button just below the video and throw a few bucks my way. If you don't want to send me your hard-earned money, I completely understand, no problem. You can like this video, subscribe to my channel, and watch this video all the way to the end. All of those are ways that you can really support me in my dream. So thank you so much for being here and listening to me blab. Let's get back to those lights. I'm only going to show you the way that I set up these lights. I did use the clips and the zip ties, which in my opinion is probably the best way for setup with wire shelving. However, I did want to show you the book real quick, so you can see the other ways that they will help you with setup. Hopefully you can see a way in the book here that will help and work best for your personal situation. Just pause it if you see something that you want to read. Alright, let's go ahead and jump right into the setup here. On the top Amazon review for these lights, one of the main problems that they had was sliding these reflectors into the lights. I was actually worried when I bought them. I thought this was going to be an issue for me too. For the first part of the setup, I just wanted to show you how easy this actually was for me. I was shocked at how quick and easy the, the installation of the reflectors were. You simply line it up and slide it in. It took me probably two minutes to do all the lights. I have no idea why that person was having such an issue getting these in. But for me, there it was incredibly easy and they just slid right in, as you can see. The next part of setup was actually also incredibly easy. You just simply snap these clips right onto the top of the light. I used two clips per light, one on each end. The first one took me just a moment as I was afraid to push down with much pressure, but once you kind of figured out how much pressure to push down with, the rest of them popped in really, really easy. The clips cling to the light really well. I have no worries that these are going to pop off or fail. The ring on the top makes it super easy to thread zip ties or whatever else you would prefer to use to attach your lights to your shelving or whatever, whatever you're attaching them to. The clips were a great addition and make installing these lights very, very simple. Now that you have the reflectors and the clips on the top, it's time to attach the hole in your clips to the shelving with the included zip ties. This is much easier with two people, but you can do it by yourself with a little bit of patience. You simply thread the zip tie through the hole and the piece of wire on the shelf. Make sure to count the wires so you don't put the light on crooked. I did this a couple of times and had to cut it and redo it. Then simply zip the tie down and bada bing bada boom, your lights are up and ready to be plugged in. This method also allows you to move the lights back and forth as needed along the shelf, which can be useful. Just rinse and repeat until you've placed all the lights where you'd like them. Now it's time to hook up all your lights to the power supply and to set up the daisy chain. For my setup, all the lights are connected, so only one power cord is needed. If you're using these lights in different areas, you may need all three of the included power cords. I recommend plugging the power cord into the light that will be closest to the outlet that you're plugging it into. Once it's plugged in, you simply connect all the lights with the included cords. I kind of show you how I have mine set up here. The first side is a little strange since you use the first plug-in for the power. It really doesn't matter how you do this as long as all the lights are connected. Also connect the far sides and the power supply will fire up all the lights at once. I'm not sure how many Resident Evil video game fans I have here, but setting these lights up kind of reminded me of the old PS1 Resident Evil 2 puzzles. Keep connecting all the power cables until it lights up the main power. Usually in the Resident Evil, it was to power up a subway station or the mansion. For us, unfortunately, it's just some grow lights. Anyway, it's always fun to imagine. Okay, it's time to move the shelf into the tent and put some plants under the light. But real quick before we do that, and I show you those results, let me show you where you can go and get yourself your own carnivorous plant. I'm super pumped about teaming up with California Carnivores. They're one of the most experienced and knowledgeable carnivorous plant nurseries in the entire world. They have a massive selection year round of all types of carnivorous plants. There will definitely be something in their nursery you fall in love with. On top of that, they've also been generous enough to offer my viewers an exclusive 10% discount on their order when they enter CP Hub at checkout. That's CP Hub. Head on over and pick out yourself a new carnivorous plant to add to your collection. You know you deserve it. 
let's go ahead and get back to the video. Okay, the shelf has been moved into the tent and some pings have been placed under the lights. I'm glad I took this video. As you can see the color of the pings, it's really important to note as you'll be able to see those same pings after they've been under the Barina grow lights for 10 days. I want to point something out real quick and it's not it's that some of the pings are more green. They've only been under a windowsill and have stayed strictly green with no color. The ones you see in these trays that are more of a pinkish color have all grown under grow lights and have turned more of the pinkish color. I had two trays of these propagations growing, one under my windowsill and then another one under the grow lights. They're all kind of mixed in now, but real quick before I show you the 10 day results, check out all the plant, other plants that I have growing under these lights. I have my ping rock I received from California carnivores. If you want to check that out, you can see the link in the description. Remember to use CP Hub at checkout for 10% off. It's one of my favorite pieces that I have right now. It's doing really well under the light. It's sitting, in a, it's sitting a bit higher than the Nepenthes because of the tray that it's sitting on. I also have my Nepenthes down here with my mister that's reaching them right now. They all seem to be really growing well under the Barina lights. Nepenthes typically don't need as strong of a light, so I have the lights about 14 inches away from the plants. Okay, it's been 10 days later. All these pinks have been under my Barina lights. They are all about 6 inches away, and I'll show you that here in just a moment though. It's kind of hard to see because of the pinkish tint that the light puts off, but all the pinks that were just green are all starting to show new growth that is pink. As I go through all these pinks in the tray, pay close attention to the really green ones. You'll notice that most of them now have a pink leaf growing out the top. This means that the Brina Grow Lights after just 10 days have started to help coloring up my pinks. This is huge. It means that they're strong enough for the pinks for sure. In my experience, if they're strong enough to color up a ping this fast in just 10 days, and they're also probably strong enough to color up a Venus flytrap or a Saracedia over time. Flytraps and SARS will be the ultimate test for these lights. I just put all mine outside today, but I'm going to put a new flytrap I purchased under these lights to test them out and see how it colors them up. Make sure to subscribe so you can see the update on that video. You can see that my second shelf, the pings are doing really well. Lots of great color. Although for full disclosure, most of these have already been under grow lights. You can see the top shelf, the lights are about 6 inches away, and the bottom shelf, the lights are about 10 inches away. Both seem to be really effective so far. I'm really excited about this, as the Barina grow lights are super functional, but also really effective. At least so far. I'm only 10 days in, but the simplicity in the setup and installation has been a breath of fresh air for me. So far, I would definitely give these a strong recommendation. Especially if you just need them for Nepenthes or Pings right off the bat. I do think that they're going to work well with Saracenia and Flytraps as well. Just make sure they're only about 6 to 8 inches away from the plant. Overall, I do recommend these lights. I have more testing and research to do, but coloring up my Pings in only 10 days tells me that these lights have real promise. And at only $10 per light when you buy the set of 6, that's seriously such a great deal. Make sure to check out the description so you can see how much these lights are going for on Amazon right now. Also check the description to see if I'm selling my plants. I'd really love to be able to sell a plant to you. Also if you'd like to see how I moved all these pings over, check out the video that just popped up on the screen there. I kind of go over everything I do to move these from the propagation trays that I have over into their individual planters. And thank you so much for being here with me. I really hope to catch you guys in my next video. Bye.